Welcome back to Over 50 and Flourishing. I'm Dominique Soxa. I am so glad you're joining me for today's episode. We are diving into a topic that is incredibly exciting and relevant for anybody looking to live a longer, healthier life, which really, frankly, isn't that all of us? My guest today is Dr. Jeffrey Gross. He is a top neurological surgeon with a remarkable background in both traditional medicine and cutting edge regenerative treatments. Dr. Gross graduated from UC Berkeley in biochemistry and molecular cell biology. He earned his medical degree from George Washington University and completed specialized training in neurological surgery and spinal biomechanics. Dr. Gross isn't just about treating conditions, he is passionate about helping people extend their health span. As the founder of Recelebrate, he is at the forefront of anti-aging and regenerative medicine offering innovative treatments like stem cells and exosomes. Today, he's here to talk about how these advancements can help you live healthier, longer, and without limits. If you've ever wondered how to ensure your health keeps up with your years, this conversation is one you won't want to miss. So let's get started. Summer is here, the heat is on, and that might mean you're wearing a little less, maybe some summer dresses or the little black dress. Fear no more. With Honey Love, you can feel confident in anything that you wear. They're super power short, by the way, one of their best sellers. If you have not tried Honey Love's shapewear, you don't know what you're missing. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Say yes to every adventure with Honey Love. Today's show is sponsored by Midi Health. There are great things that come with age, wisdom, experience, and knowledge, just to name a few. But if you're a woman over 50, it can also bring some less desirable things like hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, and weight gain, all of these symptoms of menopause and perimenopause. Yes, hormonal transition is a fact of life, but it doesn't mean you've got to accept its symptoms as just another part of aging. The experts at Midi Health understand what you're going through and they know how to help. Midi Health is the only virtual care clinic for women navigating midlife hormonal transition. They support you with safe, effective, FDA-approved medications, as well as supplements, lifestyle coaching, and preventative health guidance. What's more, all their services are covered by insurance, and they're conveniently accessible through telehealth visits and 24-7 messaging. If you're over 50, use all that wisdom you've gained over the years and visit Midi Health because you deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's joinmidi.com. Hey, the struggle is real when it comes to finding a great swimsuit, one that flatters your body in all the right places and has great quality that you can keep for years and years. I found mine this summer and you need to get it. It is Miracle Suit. The fit is so good, I had to share it with you because if you've struggled to find the perfect swimsuit, struggle no more. Their Miratex fabric feels like this wonderful firm hug and it gives your body a true miracle transformation. Miracle Suit is my go-to for swimwear. I can't recommend them enough. I've got a special limit time offer just for my listeners. Get 25% off when you order today with my exclusive promo code OVER50 at miraclesuit.com. 25% off. Such an amazing discount. This offer isn't going to last long, so order now with code OVER50 at miraclesuit.com. It seems every week there's a never-ending list of projects around the house, and we tell ourselves, oh, sure, we're going to knock it out, you know, get that television mounted, build that piece of furniture that we just bought, or cleaning out the garage. Let me tell you, for all the tasks you need to do but don't want to do, there's TaskRabbit. TaskRabbit connects you with skilled taskers to help you clean, move, do furniture, assembly, home repairs, and so much more. To get started, go to TaskRabbit.com or download the app. Search for the best tasker for your job based on cost, skill set, availability, and past client reviews. Next, schedule your tasker, even as early as the same day. Once the tasker has completed the job, simply pay, tip, and review on the convenient TaskRabbit app. Tackle your 
to-do list today, get 15% off your first task at taskrabbit.com or on the TaskRabbit app using promo code OVER50. That's promo code OVER50 at taskrabbit.com for 15% off your task. TaskRabbit, book trusted help for home tasks. Hey, Jeff, it is so good to have you on Over 50 and Flourishing. This is the perfect podcast, I think, for what it is that you do. Um, I am so fascinated with regenerative medicine. You know, I, my viewers know I like a holistic approach to life. And any opportunity to be able to explore this arena is a fascinating one for me. And your background is really intriguing. So I'm gonna let you do all the talking and go ahead, explain who you are. And I know you were in a traditional type of a practice. Talk to me about your journey and, and your switch and transition to this approach of medicine. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to be here and share and hopefully educate people with options that we may not even know about. So. Right. So yeah, I was, uh, I'm a simple country neurosurgeon. I was uh, just, you know, taking care of people with brain and spine problems uh, for a number of decades. And because we're here in an over 50 and flour flourishing community, you know, mm -hmm. I have accumulated those years in practice. So uh, I have a spine fellowship, uh, neck and back pain were my bread and butter. I took care of people with, uh, you know, disc problems, pinched nerves, uh, all the way from therapy, through injections, through surgery if needed. Uh, and it was because of my patients really that I, I opened my mind to regenerative medicine, which can sometimes be called stem cell medicine, uh, mm -hmm. based on stem cells, and added that to my practice. And I not only added it because it was a missing tool, but I, I do almost, almost exclusively that now because it's grown and, and blossomed so wonderfully. Um, and I'm excited about it. So I've had sort of a, a, a rebirth or renaissance in my own academic interest in medicine, which has become so watered down by health insurance and what they'll mm -hmm. cover and what, how it's going in the community. But in short, people would uh, come to me and say, hey, doc, the injections didn't work. The therapies didn't work. I'd say, well, I, I guess we should look what's on the surgical menu. And they'd say, well, I'm not quite ready for surgery. I'd say, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I kind of don't want to offer it to you yet either. And they would say, how about stem cells? So I stopped going to the annual spine surgery meetings where the same academicians pat themselves on the back for doing the same things we've been doing for 50 years. And, and I started going to stem cell meetings. And luckily, I have some, you know, undergraduate background in that. And a lot has happened in 25, 30 years. So it, it was exciting. I started adding stem cell regenerative type offerings and for my patients and it's just been crazy since since then yeah i want to i really want to touch on something before we go even further because i know it's going to be the first question from my audience these are stem these are ethically sourced stem cells right these are not stem cells that come from embryos so i just want to nip that immediately in case anybody's thinking oh you know that's where they're coming from no that's not the case no. so tell us about that process yeah, so you know the two main sources of stem cells, and when we use the phrase stem cells here, there are other regenerative biologics in the stem cell realm, but let's just call them stem cells for now. Mm -hmm. um, the stem cells that we use either come from your own body or from, from ethically, morally donated uh, by mothers who are having a planned C-section. So congratulations, here's your new baby. Oh, by the way, this amniotic fluid and stuff you were gonna throw away? we have it? Mm -hmm. And then it, it goes through a process of screening and testing, making sure it's safe. And then we, we basically purchase it from those uh, labs who do that work. Right. And I'm, I'm glad we're talking about that. And before we even got into this conversation, and uh, as I was researching you and what you do, it made me think back to my own choice as a mother. When I had my son 19 years ago, I banked the cord blood. I did cord blood registry, the same thing, took the cells because, you know, I was educated and told, you know, should he have a health issue later in life, like leukemia or something, those cells could potentially be life-saving for him. Right. And, and now expand on that. 
the original reasons were exactly that in case, God forbid, your child has leukemia, you need a whole bone marrow replacement. But now family members and even others can use can have access to those cells successfully. So there, there are the ba the the banking uh, system now allows that. That's fascinating. See, and I didn't even know that. <laughs> my son will be like, wait, those are my cells. I'm like, no, but they could be mine. <laughs> now we're fighting over stem cells. Right. But it's fascinating. So, so talk about, um, interesting how your patients came to you first and said, okay, what about stem cells? So they were almost in a way educating you and saying, hey, doc, look in this arena because we think this is where it's going. So once you started opening that door and exploring, what did you find? Uh, well, after some retraining and re-education and excitement, uh, I started seeing what had happened in the world. And the United States is slow. We're, we're, we're sort of late to the party here. Uh, mm -hmm. And for over two decades in Europe and Asia, uh, and probably a little less than that in Central America and Mexico, um, you know, medicine has passed us by and, and they've been doing this rather successfully and safely. So uh, I tapped into the best practices and found that uh, there were wonderful natural, natural and biologic answers without pharmaceuticals, without surgeries, at least worth trying before you undergo a significant or large open surgery. You know, originally I was doing this for, for spines, but it's expanded to joints and other things and beyond just structural parts of the body. We're doing all kinds of wellness and anti-aging and biohacking and and um, you know, fighting inflammation at its root cause. Yeah, it's and it's multi-pronged, and I'm so glad that you're talking about that. And we'll dive into each of these categories. You know, as I was going through your website, and you really do cover it all. But you know, let's kind of talk about the traditional route. I mean, let's say somebody comes into you and they've had chronic knee pain, and maybe it's osteoarthritis, or it's from overuse and you know the, the typical the protocol is normally steroid shot after steroid shot and then maybe a gel filler and then maybe a knee replacement so right. explain to my audience how stem cell therapy would work in this case what does it do well um the the direct application of these regenerative biologic stem cells or the signaling factors related to stem cells uh, when placed in the joint strategically uh, with the right targets uh, can significantly help slow the inflammation, reverse the inflammation in the cells that that produced the cartilage in that joint in the first place and then maintained the cartilage over many decades. And that, that ability to heal or maintain that joint has been lost. Those cells are inflamed and that's the whole basis of osteoarthritis, whether it's from overuse, an old injury, an old surgery, like an arthroscopy surgery that accelerates the osteoarthritis process. Some doctors call that bone on bone or cartilage yeah. wear and tear. It's all the same pathway really, for the most part. So we seek to slow, stop and reverse that, giving those cells that made the cartilage in the first place a chance to turn back on the factory and make more cartilage and enhance the structure and function of the joint. And of course with it, reduce pain and ideally prevent or, or significantly delay the need for some type of joint replacement surgery. It's fascinating. And does this apply to anywhere in the body? Uh, well, structurally speaking, uh, we've been using it on almost every joint. We've done fingers and toes, ankles, all the way up, you know, hips. Uh, I've done some interesting parts of joints. And then we, we are applying it in the spine, which is really why I jumped into it in the first place. So. Right. So that's just the structural part, but yes, I mean, uh, and that, the only thing we're working on right now, I will add is TMJ, which is a joint, of oh, course, you know, a yes. lot of people have. And yeah. um, I, I wanna, I, I'm working on a smaller needle that we can access through the inside of the mouth. Um, other than that, I, I haven't done any TMJs quite yet, but we're working on it. Well, I'll, I'll sign up. I've had TMJ and I had to wear that really thick mouth guard to be able to open up the jaw so that the ball can fit into the socket. So, so that was a really good look, but if there were a way to, <laughs> to inject stem cells to get me there quicker, I would sign up. Um, so, so obviously this is really, really specific targeted therapy. Yes. How, are you using like ultrasound guided? How are, how are you doing it to make sure you're getting the stem cells exactly where they need to go? 
So I, I, I do everything based on a, a really high quality MRI ahead of mm -hmm. time. And the, the MRI with done with all the bells and whistles uh, helps. And the, we correlate that with where the pain is actually coming from, you know, because like the knee is a big structure. It may only be one part of the knee. So we correlate that. We, we t do the targeting. All the hard work is done ahead of time. Right. And once I, you know, I do all the measurements, I know exactly where to deposit the biologics or the stem cells. Then in the, uh, in the injection room, which we do with a little sedation, we, we use a, a fluoroscopy, which is basically a, a movie x-ray machine. So ultrasound is another option. I don't use ultrasound. Um, it, it's a little fuzzier. It's not as mm. crisp and clear visually, but it's easier to use like in an office setting. I just, we do these under a little sedation and, and a nice sort of concierge setting. Right. And what type of results are you seeing? Like how long does it take? I mean, I know people go in and they want, you know, the quick fix, give me the yeah. cortisol shot, alleviate my pain. I, I, I want, I want the pain gone so I can go play. I can go do, how does it work with this type of, you know, stem cell or biologics? And I want to even talk about what that means if it's not stem cell, but yeah. what is the regeneration process? How long does it take and how long do results last from this? We, we see a a two peak response in time. The first peak can happen almost right away. And that's, that's the anti-inflammatory benefit because when you receive these biologics, they are influencing your own cells to stop making the proteins of inflammation, which is really a, a defense mode and flip them into peacetime mode. And they, they, they focus on anti-inflammatory proteins, which is really the body's optimal mode optimal functioning mode, the cells function well, and they can make cartilage and produce the lubrication for the joint, whatever else they're designed to do that they should be doing. So mm -hmm. uh, we see that and that can last days and weeks. And that's an initial benefit. Um, but the regenerative piece, when we start to see on the MRI after the procedure with the increasing thickness of the cartilage mm -hmm. and the, the benefits with reduction in pain and improvement and function that go with that, that usually is measured in months, like three to six months on average. It depends on how much wear and tear you have and how much, you know, osteoarthritis and bone on bone you have, right? The, the more you have, the longer it's going to take. But we, we've been very successful in getting within three to six months significant benefit in, in almost all of our clients. And if not, we, we sometimes come back and reevaluate to see if a second one is needed, but generally it's a one-time deal. Wow. Oh, really? That's, and that's it. And then the body heals. Yeah. I mean, and this, this, this tracks, uh, the literature we follow is from the, the French. They have published their 15 year follow-up and, um, we follow the same protocol. They have over 80% of those patients that they treated 15 years later are still doing great and don't need the knee replacement. They were offered at the beginning of the study. That's absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Wow. I mean, Wow. Okay. We are talking regenerative medicine with Dr. Jeffrey Gross. I, you know, if you are interested in helping your body heal, not putting band-aids on things or trying to avoid surgery if at all costs, because that is not a, a solution necessarily. It may be, but, but there is no guarantee. Right. We're talking about ways and options to be able to optimize your health using stem cells, or biologics, as Dr. Gross is talking about. And we're going to talk more with him about this regenerative, regenerative stem cell medicine, what it applies to, how effective it is, and how transformative this is now in the medical space. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. Summer is here, the heat is on, and that might mean you're wearing a little less, maybe some summer dresses or the little black dress. Fear no more. With Honey Love, you can feel confident in anything that you wear. I love their shapewear. Look, we've all been there. We've had shapewear that pinched and binded and it was uncomfortable. You couldn't breathe and it's just makes you miserable. Hey, you wanna look good. You wanna get those nice curves showing in comfort and style. And that's what I love about Honey Love. They're super power short, by the way, one of their best sellers. If you have not tried 
Honey loves shapewear. You don't know what you're missing, but it doesn't stop there. They have more than just sculpt wear. They have great body suits, bras, tanks, even leggings for everyday support. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash over 50. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash over 50. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Say yes to every adventure with Honey Love. Today's show is sponsored by Midi Health. There are great things that come with age, wisdom, experience, and knowledge, just to name a few. But if you're a woman over 50, it can also bring some less desirable things like hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, and weight gain, all of these symptoms of menopause and perimenopause. Yes, hormonal transition is a fact of life, but it doesn't mean you've got to accept its symptoms as just another part of aging. The experts at Midi Health understand what you're going through and they know how to help. Midi Health is the only virtual care clinic for women navigating midlife hormonal transition. They support you with safe, effective, FDA-approved medications, as well as supplements, lifestyle coaching, and preventative health guidance. What's more, all their services are covered by insurance, and they're conveniently accessible through telehealth visits and 24-7 messaging. If you're over 50, use all that wisdom you've gained over the years and visit MIDI Health because you deserve to feel great. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com. That's Join MIDI.com. Welcome back to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. My guest today is Dr. Jeffrey Gross with Recelebrate, C E L L in caps for a very specific reason. We are talking about stem cells, how he is using stem cell therapy in regenerative medicine and using biologics. We're gonna talk a little bit more about that, Dr. Gross. What is the difference or is there a difference between stem cells and biologics or is that under the same umbrella? The, the umbrella would be, you know, regenerative biologics because okay. regenerative means that we're, we're using strategies that the body used to create and heal itself over the years uh, strategically to to help something that we can't heal any longer. Either, either our cells aren't functioning as well as they once did, or our, our own stem cells aren't doing what they once did when we were much younger, because young people heal much easier. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're tapping back into that stem cells. Uh, most of that comes from stem cells in our body or in someone from someone else, but there are other regenerative biologics. On the very low end, you have PRP or platelet rich plasma, which where you collect the growth. Perfect growth factors. You can use that, you know, for joint problems. You can, there are cosmetic purpose, you know, uh, the, the vampire facial, right, is from PRP. Well, we can do that with stem cells too. But the latest, over the last six, seven years, the latest clinical uh, advancement really is called stem cell derived exosomes. And um, it turns out that if we track some stem cells, let's say we gave you, uh, Dom, some stem cells, put them in your bloodstream, and we track them, they'd be gone in 10 to 14 days. But the benefits would likely last for weeks, if not months. And then of course, some permanent benefits. And the reason for that is those cells that we gave you communicated with your cells because your body's gonna do the real work. And uh, those are the stem cells we gave you communicated through small signaling particles from cell to cell that all of our cells make all day long. And they're small little out-pocketed bubbles uh, basically a small cell. And it's it's a little bit of a membrane of the cell, some growth factors and some micro RNAs that go into the recipient cell, influence thing, hey, stop the inflammation, hmm. get on the bandwagon, get back to the youthful restorative healing mode. And th those are those are exosomes. So we, we get that youthful stem cell derived exosome and they're much more abundant, they're more cost effective, and they're really the business end of what a stem cell does anyway. So uh, I've moved more into the exosome side of regenerative biologics these days. They travel better through the body. They cross into the nervous system through the blood brain barrier. And if you think about it, uh, if you ever seen a pregnant lady, her mm -hmm. skin is all aglow, her hair mm -hmm. and nails are growing like crazy. Right. Usually she's in a good mood and she typically doesn't have a lot of aches and pains, except maybe the lower back from carrying the baby. But, why is that? She's getting a daily dose of exosomes from the stem cells from her baby, crossing her placenta into her bloodstream. 
we're just tapping back into that natural thing that already exists. Fascinating. You know what? We talk stem cells and, and people use that term as if, oh yeah, stem cell, but okay, let's bring us back to science class. What is a stem cell? A stem cell is a type of cell that can still um, develop or differentiate into a particular organ or tissue cell. So it's like someone who hasn't been trained for a job yet, and they're just waiting to get trained to see what kind of job they're going to do. Hmm. And um, those all other cells stem from those cells. That's why they're called stem cells. Ah, and there are, there are different, I'm sorry to interrupt you, there are different types. Uh, okay. When you're an embryo, there are embryonic stem cells. They're super powerful, right? And the, there are ethical considerations, as you mentioned at the outset here. And then as, as the fetus grows and develops and then becomes a baby um, that, that help the baby grow, those stem cells are doing a lot of grow and division and becoming other cells. And they're robust. They're full in the placenta, the umbilical cord, the amniotic fluid. And that's, th those are powerful, but they're not, they can't make a new person or a new limb, although we're getting there. Um, we would need to tap backwards into those more powerful embryonic stem cells to do that. There's a lot of research in that area, but they're not really clinically available, at least not here in the U.S. Interesting. And so what happens when we're born? How, how does our stem cell process work as we go through life? So we maintain banks of stem cells in our all over our body, but the big sources are the bone marrow and some, mm -hmm. some adipose or fat tissue. And they're also lined up along our vessels and they're called upon if you cut yourself and you need to heal, they get activated. Uh, if you do hormetic activities, and that means it, it, hormesis or hormetic activities mean to give the body a little bit of stress to build resilience, like certain exercise, cold plunges, hot mm -hmm. sauna, uh, fasting, those all build resilience without really hurting the individual, unless you do too much. Uh, those stimulate uh, stem cell both release, so increasing the number and increasing their function. Of course, the healthier you live, the more stem cell activity you'll have and you'll maintain a slower aging, a biological aging process. Even yoga releases uh, mm -hmm. stem cells. Certain certain plants, uh, food, uh, fruits and vegetables, clean eating, anything that is the opposite of that, that's pro-inflammatory, suppresses our own cell and even our stem cell activity. So how, what your grandmother told you to do with healthy living is good for your stem cells. Got it. So we're still producing and making stem cells throughout life. It's just, it's not as frequent as we age and also our lifestyle choices will inhibit or enhance depending on what we're choosing to do. Is that right? That, that's right. We probably don't produce them, but they, they're dormant waiting for to be called upon. So we activate them. And that's really why these exosomes are so cool, because they activate our dormant and sleepy stem cell population that becomes less effective over the years. Interesting. OK, so tell me some of the common things that you're treating. I mean, clearly we've talked about spine. That was your initial area of interest. So I'm assuming neck all the way down to right. lower, you know, lumbar. Um, what else are you seeing? How, how else is it helping people? And then tell me about the kind of results that you're getting from this. Yeah. So just to tap for a moment back into the structural elements, spine and joints, that's the low hanging fruit. Uh, sure. we have, we have great results. We have before and after MRIs almost across the board showing increased thickness of the cartilage where, where people are regenerating cartilage, uh, in these case studies. Um, and, uh, and with it, they feel better and they, they, they're they moving away from the need for a joint replacement. Uh, you know, and I wouldn't have been able to say this to people, you know, eight years ago before I jumped into this field to add it to my practice. And many doctors out there in the community still don't know about it. So we love to offer that option to anyone trying to avoid a surgery. The second group would be would be the intravenous use. So we, we do these intravenous from from preventative anti-aging enthusiasts all the way through people with inflammatory problems like autoimmune issues, you know, the thyroiditis, uh, the, the inflammatory bowel, the, the arthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis group, or people who have other autoimmune problems, and then people recovering from some type of inflammatory issue, whether it's a brain injury, heart attack, stroke, um, even, you know, a lot of diseases of aging really happen because the stem cells aren't there to fight it. 
they're not working as well. So we see an inflammatory component with cardiovascular problems, kidney failure, uh, metabolic issues like type 2 diabetes. So we've used IVs uh, to help people have their cells function better and slow the development uh, of that disease process and improve their health overall. Uh, and then uh, the, the third group would be just sort of miscellaneous. We, we have some cosmetic, just like the, uh, the vampire facial, we can do the same with exosomes. We've had some benefit from thinning hair. Uh, I've had some of that myself, yeah. And then um, we even have some sexual function shots for both the ladies and the men. Interesting. So it's a, again, it's stimulating. It's, so it's stimulating cells. Is it stimulating also blood flow then to that area as well? What else is going on? Yeah, anything that would suppress inflammation, uh, which is really the goal here, uh, right. will improve the local health of the tissues. So you get better blood flow, better cell metabolism, which means cellular health, what the cells are busy doing. They're busy doing what they're supposed to do instead of busy fighting our environment, fighting inflammation. You think about all the pesticides or what chemicals are in our food or the seed oils and, and what's in our air that it's not good or mm -hmm. water source or, or electromagnetic fields we've got too many of, you know, so yep. our bodies are busy, you know, being inflamed. So if our cells are busy, you know, fighting that they can't be in their proper mode, you know, it's like, you can't be relaxed if you're anxious all the time. So we, we help those cells flip back into a, uh, a maintenance mode where they can they can help our cells do what they're supposed to do. Interesting. Is it? Uh, it sounds to me like it's it's a preventative um, type of a measure. Correct. I mean, have they discovered stem cells in terms of treatment for you know major issues that we see today from dementia, Alzheimer's, cancer? I mean, is that a direction that it's going in, or are we just seeing this as a, a preventative measure right now? Just curious. No, bo both. I mean, uh, listen, there are wonderful papers from all over the planet on use of stem cells for various types of diseases. Uh, here in the U.S., the FDA regulates marketing claims. So we're not al yet allowed to say that we can treat or, uh, or cure something, um, but we, are, we can demonstrate what these types of biologics can do to help your body uh, improve its health. Mm -hmm. So that we have to be cautious because, you know, we, we're told what we can and can't say. <laughs> Got it. Well, it sounds to me like you are enabling your body. It's an assist, you know, and, and we keep hearing inflammation is public enemy. Number one. Yes. Everything that you hear lately, reduce information, reduce inflammation from the foods that you eat to the lifestyle choices, from sleep to exercise to you name it. What? What is it about inflammation that is just wrecking our health? What's it doing to our body? Well, at the cellular level, it's, it's, it's gumming up the works, right? It keeps your cell from doing what it's designed to do. It, it, it's, it overburdens the cell where the cell can't at night when we do most of our repair, it can't, it can't do that. It can't make enough antioxidant uh, proteins and things. It can't repair the DNA. Um, but as, as organ systems, they become uh, degenerated, right? Look at the joint. The joint's the easy example, right? Um, if you look closely at osteoarthritis or, or wear and tear of the joints, it's a metabolic problem of the cells uh, mm -hmm. that get gunked up with inflammation uh, just adjacent to the joint. And, and, and some people have experienced this where they have joint pain, but if they eat a clean anti-inflammatory diet, their joints feel better. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're tapping back back into that where where we see those cells, um, you know, they just can't support the joint. But when we help flip them back into anti-inflammatory mode, the joint starts to get healthy again. And it's almost it's almost too simple a concept because we use the word and we throw the word inflammation around. But really, it's it's an entire cascade of events in the cell that are happening. Right. It, you know, it is interesting. And I'm curious, can you change genetic patterns? I mean, some people will say, well, you know, my grandmother had, our, you know, or um, osteoporosis and my mother had osteoporosis. So I'm in line to have osteoporosis. And yes, there may be a genetic component to that. But can you, through an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, reverse, change that and, and incorporate stem cell therapy so that's not your existence as well? 
Yes, I think we've learned in the last decade or so that the vast majority of our health, especially in our later years, or what we call the health span, which mm -hmm. you know how many of our longer years are filled with health, uh, are are really epigenetic, meaning uh, influenced by lifestyle uh, mm -hmm. choices. Uh, some of those aren't choices, like what's in our air and in our water may not be choices. Sure. But um, we the the more we can do epigenetically. And, and these regenerative biologics work epigenetically. They're not changing your genes, right? But we have so much redundancy and, and diversity in our genes that, that we've learned the epigenetic component is probably the larger component. So it's more what we choose to do and how we do it than what we were given. Mm, got it. So you are saying then lifestyle and choice will supersede what it is that you came into this world with, which means you can't blame it on your parents for everything, right? Right. right. It's and, and doesn't get doesn't do you any good anyway. So you might as well do what you, control what you can control. You may as well own it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about one of the biggest issues facing our population, and that is diabetes. Yeah. Um, it has become really public enemy number one, and we see a lot of young people getting diagnosed with it. Um, and I want to talk. We're going to take a quick break, um, Dr. Gross, but I want to talk about stem cells and the connection to that and if it's a way to maybe move forward in that arena as well. So we'll tackle that on the back side of this break. You are watching and listening to Over 50 and Flourishing. Hey, the struggle is real when it comes to finding a great swimsuit, one that flatters your body in all the right places and has great quality that you can keep for years and years. I found mine this summer and you need to get it. It is Miracle Suit. The fit is so good, I had to share it with you because if you've struggled to find the perfect swimsuit, struggle no more. Miracle Suit will flatter your body. It has high quality sculpting swimsuits that are designed to last. You will wear this all throughout the rest of the season and you will use it for many, many more summers to come. Their Miratex fabric feels like this wonderful firm hug and it gives your body a true miracle transformation. How great does that sound? Confident by the pool and the beach. Miracle Suit is my go-to for swimwear. I can't recommend them enough. I've got a special limit time offer just for my listeners. Get 25% off when you order today with my exclusive promo code OVER50 at miraclesuit.com. 25% off, such an amazing discount. This offer isn't going to last long, so order now with code OVER50 at miraclesuit.com. It seems every week there's a never-ending list of projects around the house, and we tell ourselves, oh, sure, we're gonna knock it out, you know, get that television mounted, built that piece of furniture that we just bought, or cleaning out the garage. Let me tell you, for all the tasks you need to do but don't want to do, there's TaskRabbit. TaskRabbit connects you with skilled taskers to help you clean, move, do furniture assembly, home repairs, and so much more. For me, I just bought some new furniture, and I'm sorry, I don't have the time to put it together or the skill set in some cases. That's where TaskRabbit comes in. To get started, go to TaskRabbit.com or download the app. Search for the best tasker for your job based on cost, skill set, availability, and past client reviews. Next, schedule your tasker, even as early as the same day. Once the tasker has completed the job, simply pay, tip, and review on the convenient TaskRabbit app. Taskers have assembled more than 3.4 million pieces of furniture. They've done 700,000 home repairs and completed 1.5 million moves and more. Plus, with TaskRabbit's happiness page, if you're not satisfied, they want to make it right. Tackle your to-do list today. Get 15% off your first task at TaskRabbit.com or on the TaskRabbit app using promo code OVER50. That's promo code OVER50 at TaskRabbit.com for 15% off your task. Task Rabbit, book trusted help for home tasks. Welcome back. My guest today is Dr. Jeffrey Gross. We're talking about regenerative medicine today. And Dr. Gross has a wealth of experience. In fact, he's, as you've been listening, he has gone from a traditional medical practice into this new arena of stem cell therapy and just the different types of options it's giving patients now. And I feel like it's so interesting, uh, Dr. Gross, as we move forward 
in a way, it's as if we are honoring our past and we are honoring sort of maybe a little more ancient traditions um, and understanding our body, helping our body help itself as opposed to masking it, as opposed to creating um, unnatural pharmaceuticals. Yep. You know, it, it's like we're trying to go back to enable it. It's like animals that can regrow a limb after right. they've lost a limb. We're trying to help our bodies regrow and remake what it is that it's losing, correct? You're right. We, we've come full circle now and we're back to the natural and it's been there all along. You know, we just had to figure it out. Why do you think it has been so overlooked until now? Well, it hasn't been uh, fully overlooked. If you think about it, uh, you know, in most cultures, if you're sick, your grandmother makes you chicken soup. And the, oh. reason, the reason for that is uh, that the chicken soup comes from chicken stock which is mm -hmm. from the bones of a chicken and what's in those bones, stem cells and exosomes. Mm -hmm. uh, the same reason that bone broth is healthy or bone marrow is a delicacy and many animals eat bone marrow. You know, you see that uh, and why, why we even get exosomes from plants and fruits and vegetables and things like that. So, so this has been known all along. All those things were known to be healthy. We didn't know why. Mm. So now we know why we know, we know enough molecular biology we know enough at, at the nanoscale level to know what's going on at the cellular in the cellular response. We've studied healthy and unhealthy people and look at their cells, what the cells make and what's going on. So we've just finally learned enough. It's fascinating. I, are, are there more medical practitioners who are kind of crossing into this lane and starting to explore this? Maybe people who like you we're getting frustrated with the traditional modalities and thinking there's got to be something else out there to help people. But I mean, truly help, help themselves basically. Yes. And this is a growing field. I, I mean, um, you know, 10 years ago, it was hard to find PRP if you have tennis elbow. Now most orthopedic doctors will offer you PRP for tennis elbow. So mm -hmm. it's, it's coming and, and, and we're, we're seeing um, increase in the, the activities and the, and the educational opportunities here in this country um, to so we can catch up with Europe and, and Asia because they're way ahead of us. Interesting. Before the break, we were talking about the increase in uh, diabetes in this country. So I'm curious, are you seeing stem cell therapy as an avenue to be able to help people in this arena as well? In some ways, yes, because as, as, you, as you know, there are really two types of diabetes. There's the the one you're born with, the genetic one, yes. and then there's the one that you cost, which is the acquired one. So first one's called type one, and the second one's called type two. And both of them are associated with uh, increased amounts of inflammation. So as we spoke earlier, um, mm -hmm. uh, regenerative biologics, stem cells, and the stem cell derived exosomes all help to suppress the inflammatory damage that comes from the overabundance of this toxin called sugar. So, um, which is highly inflammatory, right? Um, now that can be done not just directly uh, through those means, but you still have, you have to cut off the source. You have to lose the weight because too much uh, fat tissue is inflammatory. So, you know, we've seen a wonderful benefit from peptides like semaglutide, AKA mm -hmm. Ozempic and, and it's, it's cousins in that realm in suppressing weight loss and suppressing, inf uh, not suppressing weight loss, helping weight loss, suppressing inflammation and right. helping to reverse the effects of diabetes. But you know, the, the, the root cause is behavior. What goes, what goes in here, <laughs> you know, so it's all, it's all diet managed. So doing two things, one is controlling the damage with regeneratives and two is, um, dealing with the cause. Now type one, you can't fix the cause yet. Although sure. the gene therapies uh, are being quite successful, right? We're seeing that in some cases already. So there, there will be, I imagine, and you see some reports in, in China that they have a couple reversals of, of diabetes through stem cell means. So it's coming. Uh, it's coming. It's fascinating. Um, you know, when I was going through your website, what I really appreciate about what you do is that you have a multi-pronged approach. It's not just come and see me, you know, for stem cells. You're like, well, wait, there's more to the equation. And you were just touching upon that right now, Dr. Gross. And that is what you put in your mouth. You know, it's, it's very much an anti-inflammatory 
protocol. So kind of walk us through what that is. I mean, let's say somebody comes in and they see you for something where clearly stem cells or exos exosomes, am I saying that right? Right. Would, would be sufficient, but, but what else would you be talking to them about? I'm glad you asked because um, we don't want to give someone stem cells or exosomes unless their body is the most receptive to receive it and benefit from it. So right. we do it. We do a. We clean the house. We do a deep clean, cleaning. Mm -hmm. Now the people that many people that are interested in stem cells have already already holistic and smart and and have taken care of their health well. Others we we start at the basics. We diet, sleep, exercise, nutrition, macros, supplements, uh, exercise, everything. Uh, it might be uh, bioidentical hormone optimization, mm -hmm. uh, which we are finding is more and more important uh, than we had previously thought. So, and a lot of these things we didn't really cover in medical school, right? I had to go back and learn these, which wasn't difficult, but they did not cover supplements for the most part. You know, right. now we're learning the power, for example, of probiotics and mm -hmm. our gut microbiome and how anti-inflammatory it is to have the right mix of your invited guests in your belly. You know, we, we really didn't, that, that was just, you know, probably honorable mention when I was going through my education. So we want someone's health and body optimally ready to fight inflammation because sometimes that alone will help them with their problem. They may not need the regeneratives. Mm, interesting. So it can be done. And we've heard cases of this. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've listened to podcasts or personally heard stories from people who have literally reversed disease based on those things that you just touched upon. They changed their lifestyle. They went to either a plant-based diet or plant-based with uh, lean protein, started to sleep, started to move, started to meditate. And, and they were able to, through lifestyle, work their way back to good health. So that's step number one, correct? Yes, I, I, always and every time. Yeah. And then in conjunction, I mean, let's say it is an injury. Let's say, you know, you've been a ball player all your life or you've been a tennis player. You know, you've just you've worn something out or you've had just through your years, you know, the wear and tear. So you're doing all the right things, but you still need that kind of specialty treatment. Somebody comes to see you. How does that process work? You know, kind of walk us through sure. a day, a, a day in the life of a patient. <laughs> well, you know, most of my patients don't come from where I practice here in the greater Las Vegas, Nevada area. Um, they come from, you know, mostly the U.S. We have we have some Canadians and even some uh, people from the islands that come in. But they um, they they first meet us online. We do a video consultation, just like you and I are talking here today. We have that technology. It's not difficult uh, because we may need to gather labs. We may need to order uh, an MRI. Uh, mm -hmm. We may need to do a few things, and and I want to help that person, you know, you know, become a candidate if they are, or uh, let them know why they're not, or help them look at other options. Because really, I'm here to give advice, and that advice, first and foremost, is what options are available to help address your problem that you're calling me about. So we we want to cover everything, and then we would only invite here locally someone who. Uh, wants to or would benefit from an exosome or a stem cell uh, type uh, delivery. And um, so that person, we would schedule that way in advance. It would be, you know, all, all dialed in. And um, so most of my work is now, you know, remote. Um, mm -hmm. There are other, I have colleagues in our other clinics around the nation. Uh, I'm not the only one. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, you got to do your homework. Uh, most of the advertisements you will see come from Mexico or, or Central America, Panama, you know, Colombia, uh, countries like that. The reason is uh, Google and Facebook will not let us advertise here in the country. We cannot use the words biohacking, stem cells, regenerative, exosomes. It's, it's disqualified. So although we have websites, um, there's, the advertisements will, will force to things outside the country. Interesting. Okay. That's fascinating. Um, so, okay. There are doctors who are starting to offer this in their practice. So you can find people, you've got to do your homework clearly, but, but from what you're telling me, it sounds like it's a little hard to do your homework if you're not getting, I mean, I would go online and, and I would search, um, you know, where to find this type of treatment. And you're saying that that's really hard to find online. So, you know, how do you find out who would offer this type of service? No, you'll, you'll find it. Put in the right search terms. You'll find it. Put in your, your city. 
you know, like I, I've got knee pain, okay, stem cells, Dallas, Texas, you know, okay. and and you'll get some. You won't get advertisements. You'll 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 be directed to websites. I so see. I see. Okay, that makes advertise. sense. And in fact, we can't we can't make claims anyway. So the advertisements, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our websites are cautious. Like my website's super cautious about how we say things and what we say. Um, yeah, but but that's what you do. You you reach out, you get a couple opinions, uh, see your regular doctors too. Say, hey, what about stem cells? What about that type of thing? And if they mm -hmm. say oh, it's not ready yet, that means they're they just haven't opened their mind and haven't gone back and retrained. They're they're giving you information from 20, 30 years ago. It's okay. We, we get stuck in that. Just find someone else, get another opinion until you're satisfied. You've heard all your options. Got it. And then how would you figure out or how would you determine if somebody needs stem cell therapy or exosome therapy? And, and, and what would be the reason for one over the other? Um, well, I, I've moved uh, almost exclusively away from stem cells uh, for, for these reasons. Exosomes are less than half the price of the effective same dose of stem cells. Um, they're easier to store and handle. Um, they are, uh, they travel better throughout the body and the results are as good, if not better. So I, I don't see why I would use the delivery vehicle when I can go right to the package that's doing the work. Mm, that makes sense. And so if somebody comes in and says, okay, well, where are my exosomes coming from? How do you answer that? I tell them straight out. Uh, I work with uh, and purchase these from labs in, in the country that are ironically FDA certified and approved. And mm -hmm. uh, the labs receive the tissue from donors. So the donors don't get paid. The oh, donors okay. are screened ahead of time. They are people who have not had the COVID vaccine. And that's not a political statement, although it could be. It It's simply, we just don't have enough time and information to know long-term what that might do to these samples. And then those samples are tested to make sure they don't have any viruses or any infections. And then only then are they made available to me. So they go from the womb to ice to eventually get to me all frozen. And then I don't thaw them out until I'm ready to deliver them. So it's basically from the womb to ice to the patient. Right. And so these are essentially pregnant women who have donated their stem cells, correct? Yeah, it, it's right at the time of the C-section. Right, got it. So, and then you determine, okay, you are a candidate for this type of a treatment. And then you say one treatment may be enough or how, how do you determine how many treatments are necessary? If it's a structural part of the body, I say we do one. We do one treatment. Most of the time that takes care of it. I'm not looking to do more than one. Uh, every now and then we have someone who, they, they've, they've had maybe a 50% benefit in a knee and six or eight months have passed and they've sort of plateaued and they want more out of it. And we might do an MRI and see if we can do a booster second treatment. But the goal is one and done. Wow, it, that's fascinating. And, and if it's an IV or, or something different, the, the IV is gonna help reverse you know, the body's inflammation, but that doesn't stay unless they make significant lifestyle changes. So those people tend to come back as needed. Uh, and then we have the group of preventatives. Like I, I do an IV for myself every three months. Okay. Um, and, and what's your reasoning? Cause I mean, you seem like a super healthy person who makes good choices. So I'm wondering why you would. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, everything in moderation, including moderation. So most of my choices are decent. Uh, every now and then, you know, you have that time, but uh, you know, I, I, I know I'm suppressing my inflammation. I know I get an energy boost and a mental clarity boost. Uh, uh, a few little aches and pains I may have sort of dissipate for a number of months at a time. Interesting. Interesting. You know, obviously it's, I can already answer this, this question, not covered by insurance because I know that's going to be the first thing that people ask. Um, you know, and, and generally these outside the box sort of concierge medical services. And, and look, I talk to a lot of um, doctors who have transitioned from the ob -GYN practice, they've moved full time into women's wellness care, and it's concierge medicine, and it's not, you know, an insurance covered um, cost, you know, they maybe you get prescribed something that can be run through the pharmacy, but maybe not. Um, do you think we will ever get to a place where this is? We will. And 
What's it going to take for that to happen? Well, we have a history of it already. So if you look at the history of PRP, platelet-rich plasma, uh, for tennis elbow or some kind of strain or ligament problem, that that is not uh, yet approved. It's a regenerative medicine. It's not yet approved for marketing claims. But the bean counters, the people that that work for the health insurance companies figured out that that works and it's cheaper than the surgery. So they started, many of them started covering that cost. So I think eventually you follow the money and those companies, the, the insurance companies will supersede what the FDA says. Cause usually they use the FDA to say, well, we're not covering that. Right. Right. But now they're going to supersede that. Yeah, do you have a guesstimation as to how long do you think it'll take? I, I think it's going to be five to 10 years. I, I think mm-hmm. also the other factor is big pharma is getting its hand very quickly in biologics. And as, as soon as they can monetize it better, then of course it'll become immediately available to everybody. And when you say biologics, describe everything that uh, that encompasses. Uh, stem cells, stem cell derived exosomes, and, and anything that we don't yet have that's coming, which we really haven't talked about yet. I don't know how deep you want me to go, but uh, we can go down the rabbit hole. I'm good. <laughs> so, so you know, we have these. You know, we talked about the more you know powerful stem cells. You can you can induce cells back in called induced pluripotent stem cells. Uh, you can also influence certain T cells in the stem cell. Uh, realm to be sort of amplified to fight cancers. There are other types of immune cells. Uh, we have a couple projects here in my own practice where we will soon have the immune cell exosomes that fight cancer. So as an augmentative thing to help fight circulating and even inject into solid tumors, anything we can do to help someone you know, fight that problem and live longer, that's what we're matched with. And then the other one is um, it'd be exosomes stuffed with more mitochondria, which as mm-hmm. you may know, are the little uh, cell within a cell. And those mitochondria can be very useful when uh, you're trying to burn fat, uh, when you're trying to maintain muscle mass, maybe if you're much older and frail uh, and, and for various types of mitochondrial diseases. So uh, these things are coming and um, they're available in other places and we hope to have them here soon. So, I think you'll see, going back to the original topic, as Big Pharma gets his hand and controls that so they can monetize it, it'll, it'll be mm-hmm. available. And yes, we can talk conspiracy theory about why all that is, but I'm sure it's yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, it's a fascinating conversation. And I just really want to circle back and reiterate something we stated at the beginning of this podcast is that this is all ethically sourced stem cells that we're talking about from pregnant women who donate them at the time of birth. Um, Correct. That's that's a very important thing to uh, to reiterate. Um, obviously, people are going to want to know, you know, they, they're going to want to find you. They're going to have that conversation. They're going to want to talk price. Um, so yeah. go ahead. And, and if you don't mind, just spell all that out for everybody. Yeah, no. So, you know, this is a lot cheaper than a surgery right now. Many people say, well, the knee replacement that's covered by my health insurance. Sure it is, but it doesn't speak to the pain and the risk and the, you know, the, the medicines you got to get and the missed work and the suffering and all that. So, so it's an opportunity cost. So we, we try to keep uh, the costs down low enough where um, my main costs are paying for the facility and the anesthesiologist for the sedation and, and the biologic. I have to buy those. So um, usually a, a single joint is, you know, no more than 10,000, give or take, depending on how many doses. But some people come in and say, yeah, my really bad right knee, but while you're in there, my shoulder, my other one. And so as we add doses, it doesn't grow as much because we're just adding the dose. You've already paid for the surgery center. So it's actually not, not terrible, not terrible in the long run. Yeah. And, and, and talk about, I mean, what types of places, if, you know, someone can't get to you, but they want to have this conversation with, you know, a local doctor, just how do you go about finding somebody to even be able to have this conversation and even price out? Uh, locally where people are. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it, it's a Google search or whatever your uh, browser of choice is. You, you figure out, uh, you know, just put your location, your ailment or your pain. And usually you could type in either regenerative or stem cell, or, you know, you could, you could type in exosome, but it's probably a little, the internet doesn't have too much on that yet. 
But Got you it. type in stem cell and you'll, you'll find, you know, you'll probably find uh, people reasonably near you. Of course, it'll, it'll gravitate to the, to the, the ads from outside the country, but uh, mm -hmm. you should be able to find somewhere near you. Big metropolitan areas ha have people like me that, that uh, are doing this now. And we have annual meetings now. There are, there are thousands of doctors, so it's coming. That's great. And see, you know, conversations like this enable people to be armed with information. So when they do reach out and call, they can talk to whomever and ask, well, do you, you know, do exosomes? And now they have an understanding of what that is and why maybe they would want that type of treatment. Um, and if people would like to reach you, um, Dr. Jeffrey Gross, tell us where they can find you and your website and all that information. Thank you. So we we, we call our business Recelebrate, as you mentioned earlier, because we're celebrating the renewal of your cells. So if you just look up R-E-C-E-L-L-E-B-R-A-T-E, -E -E, uh, all our social media, our website is recelebrate.com, Instagram, LinkedIn, or uh, Facebook. Wherever you look, you should find Recelebrate. That's great. Well, this has been, this is such a fascinating conversation. You know, I think the biggest takeaway is that, first of all, you've got the power in your life to reduce inflammation through your choices. So let's at least get people to start there, right? Be proactive in your own lane and your own space and make those decisions to help your body work for itself. And then secondly, if you're not happy with maybe the traditional approach in medicine and you want to explore alternate avenues, there are some out there. Maybe it is cost prohibit prohibitive in the moment, and it's just my hope and prayer that we get to a point and a place not too far down the road where this is normal, standard operating practice, and people will have the choice to be able to do things like this, and, and it will be covered by insurance. I, I agree. I think that's where we're all headed, and I couldn't agree yeah. more. Thank you. Uh, well, that's great. Thank you. This has been such an enlightening conversation, and I'm just grateful to have you on, and I hope we uh, got some people to think a little differently about their bodies today. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. Jeffrey Gross. Appreciate you. Great conversation. I personally learned a lot, and I'm so curious to just expand my knowledge in the realm of health and wellness and what is out there and what is cutting edge. So if these types of conversations are of interest to you, please let me know in the comment section below if you're watching on YouTube. And it's also an opportunity for you to let me know what other types of content you would like to see here on Over 50 and Flourishing. The sky is the limit. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel when you comment as well. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, I would greatly appreciate it if you would rate, review, subscribe, and share. Share me with your sister. Share me with your friend. Share me with your mother. Share me with your daughter. Let's grow this beautiful, wonderful community of women in the midlife space so that we can all flourish together. And I will see you next week.